Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy. I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In today's session, I have a special treat for you. I'm going to do a demo of how to install and configure Virtual SAN or vSAN 6.2. Virtual SAN is our storage virtualization product where we use local disks on your vSphere hosts and make a virtual data store with it. I'm going to go through and show you how to initially enable Virtual SAN. Keep in mind, Virtual SAN is actually in your vSphere hypervisor itself. It's not a separate install or appliance that has to be done. It's built right in. So all you have to do is enable it and put in a product key and that allows you to enable virtual SAN. Now there's some hardware requirements behind it as well that you have to have all the hardware such as the server, your controller card, as well as all your disks. They're all on the virtual SAN uh, hardware compatibility list. So I'm going to go through it again, I'm going to show you how to enable it, how to add additional hosts, how to do storage profiles, and some other features like that, as well as showing you the health services check. It's also available built in to Virtual SAN. So without further ado, let's get started. So here I am, I'm in the vSphere web client for our vSphere 6.2 environment. And we're going to go ahead and again, this session, I'm going to show you how to enable and install and configure virtual SAN within the vSphere web client. So let's get started. I'm going to click on hosts and clusters. And then I'm going to click on the cluster. Virtual SAN is enabled at the cluster level. So going to cluster level, we're going to go to the Manage tab. And then as you see by default, it goes to the Settings option, which is where we want to go. And then you see here under Virtual SAN, we have General. Now as you see, it says that Virtual SAN is turned off, so we click Configure. And then when it comes up, we're going to go ahead and we can automatically or manually select to claim disks for the Virtual SAN data store, but we're going to do it manually first. And then we're going to click Enable for the dedupe and compression if we chose to do that. Now I'm actually not going to do that, so we're going to uncheck it again. But you can enable dedupe and compression right off the bat. And then you can also set up your fault domains and stretch cluster if you choose to, but we're not. So then here you're going to see for the networking, we must have a VM kernel port group with virtual SAN traffic enabled on each one of them. And as you see that we have the green check marks and that all of them look good. So we have that enabled. So as you see here, we have different size disks, and as you can see that they're also all flash in this particular environment, and some are already labeled for capacity tier, and some are labeled for caching tier. Now we have four gig, 40 gig disks that are using for the capacity tier, and then we have two 5 gig and a 9 gig disks which are going to be used for the SSDs for caching on each of the individual hosts. So two of the hosts will have five gig SSDs and one will have nine. Just happens to be how the environment is. You can have it this way. It's better to have them all standard if possible, but if not, that's okay as well. So those are gonna be the disks that we can manually claim. Now you can also look at them by host and so we can see what each host has. So as you're gonna see, each host here has one capacity tier flash disk which is 40 gigs and then it has a another flash disk for the caching tier and as I said two of them are five and one of them is for nine gigs no particular reason in this particular case other than maybe just to show that they could be different but they would be the lowest common denominator and then we're just going to go ahead and click finish and again we're just initially enabling virtual SAM now we've already put in the license already so this allows us to enable virtual SAN and just to show you real quick here what it's going to do is it's going ahead and it's making all the configurations on each of the individual hosts as well as on the cluster itself to enable virtual SAN and just to show you on the recent tasks here as they work through it as you see now they're all completed I'm going to go ahead and refresh and you're going to see that virtual SAN is turned on. The add disk to storage is manual. 
as we put it. Dedupe and compression we never did turn on originally, so that's still disabled. But as you look down the on disk format version, they are at 3.0, which is the latest, and you see that none are outdated. Now when going down to disk management, we're going to see under each one of the three hosts, we have a disk group that's been created now. Each disk group has the SSD for caching and another flash disk, the 40 gig, for capacity. And that'll be for each one of the hosts. Now we're going to go over to the data stores and we're going to look for our vSAN data store, which in this particular case, it's going to be the region AO1-vSAN-COMP01 is the way it was named. Now normally yours by default would just be called vSAN data store, but you can rename it as we did here. But this is our vSAN data store, and as you see we're using the default storage policy. There's the name of it, the capacity of the current data store, which is 118 gigs. Provision space is 60, free space is 118. Now going up to the vCenter server, and the Manage tab and then Storage Providers. We're going to see that we have the vSAN provider for the hosts. Now we're going to go back to Hosts and Clusters and click on the cluster, which we're on. And then as you see here, we're going to go back to the General section. And we're going to click Edit as you see, we're still set to manual. Again, you can put automatic, but now for dedupe and compression, we're going to go ahead and enable that. And then we're going to check the allow redundancy, allow reduce redundancy, excuse me. As you see here again, we have some disk format upgrades being done at the moment, and you see update in progress. And now we're going to go ahead and watch for the update on the disk format to complete. And I'm going to fast forward this for you so you don't have to wait for the whole thing. As you see now, they're all complete. Now it'll take a minute for the disk format version to show that the update is uh, completed. So we'll catch that a little bit later. Now going to the summary screen for the cluster, opening up virtual SAN capacity. As you see, we have 119 gigs capacity, 114 free. And right now we're at a 1.01 dedupe and compression ratio. Now again, this is a, a demo environment with small drives and we don't have much on here. So we're not going to see a very high ratio for dedupe and compression. Now in a uh, production environment, you would see a much higher ratio than that. So going back to the Manage tab and Settings and under Virtual SAN, you see that dedupe and compression is enabled now. Now if you notice, the disk format is showing the latest, so the update is finally reflecting correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and add an additional host into the cluster. This is how we add an additional host into a cluster. So here we're just looking at the drives on this particular host to make sure that we have a SSD for caching as well as our capacity just like we do with our others and we do as you see there we have a 5 gig for caching and 40 gig for capacity. Now we're going to drag and drop this into the vSAN cluster and then if there's any virtual machines on that host we're going to bring them in as well which there isn't in this particular case. And Then as we add this particular host into the vSAN cluster we're going to watch the status of that and wait for that to complete. Okay, that is completed now. And now we're going to take the ESX host out of maintenance mode. And as you see, that's completed. Now if you notice, you get the warning status across all the hosts in the cluster because we've added that fourth host. As you see, we've got this error. Host can't communicate with all the other nodes in the virtual SAN cluster. Virtual SAN network is not configured on this host that we just added in. So we've got to go ahead and we've got to make sure that we enable the virtual SAN traffic for that VM kernel port on that ESX04A host. So we're going to go to manage, 
networking, VM kernel adapters, and it just so happens for these hosts here, the VMK2 is the one that is designated for vSAN traffic. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to enable vSAN traffic on that particular VM kernel. We're going to hit the little pencil there to edit. And then we're going to select virtual SAN traffic. Click OK. Go back up to the cluster level. Go to summary. As you see, the dedupe and compression savings has gone up to 12 meg. Again, that's not much because it's just a very small environment with small drives. And as you see, all of the hosts, all four hosts in the cluster, have now lost the warning sign on all of them, including the cluster itself. Go to the Manage tab. Go to Settings. Down to General. And then we're going to go to Disk Management. Because we now need to add the disks actually into the cluster for ESX04. So as you see here right now, we're using zero out of two disks. So we need to claim those disks. And as you see here, the icon, Claim Disks, we're going to click that. And as you see, we have the 5 gig for caching and we have the 40 gig for capacity. Just like our other ones. So we're going to go ahead and click OK to claim these disks for ESX04 and to bring into the fold of the vSAN cluster which will in turn increase the amount of storage space that we have for our vSAN cluster. And while that is processing, we're going to wait for that to finish. Let's skip ahead here for a second. Okay, and it's completed now. And as you see under ESX04, we now have a disk group with two out of two disks being used. So it has created that disk group and brought those drives in to the vSAN cluster. Now let's go over to the vSAN data store, which is at region A01. As you see now for in the summary tab here and virtual SAN capacity, as you see we now went from 119 gig to 159 gig and free space is 149 gig now and 16 meg dedupe and compression savings. Now we're going to go to policies and profiles and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the VM storage policies and then the virtual SAN default storage policy and then now we're going to create a new one and I'm going to name this one failure to tolerate equal one for a RAID 5 situation. Click next, click next and we're going to put some rules in here for our rule set. And we're going to select vSAN. And then we're going to add rules. We're going to do number of failures to tolerate. Again, we're going to keep that at 1. Then we're going to select the failure to tolerate method. And we're going to change it from the default of RAID 1 to RAID 5.6 for erasure coding. And then we're going to see here that which data store, which is our vSAN data store here, meets our policy requirements. And then we're going to go ahead and click finish. So now when we click over to failures to tolerate equals one, the new policy that we created, I'm going to go to the rule set. As you see, it's number of failures to tolerate is one with a fault tolerance method of five, six. So now we're going to go back to our hosts and clusters and at the cluster level. We're going to go to Monitor tab, and then we're going to go to Virtual SAN. And then we're going to go down to Capacity. Now as you see here, we have deduplication and compression overview. We give statistics on used before, used after, the savings that we're getting, the ratio. We also go down to the use capacity breakdown where it shows what is file system overhead, what is deduplication compression overhead, and checksum overhead. So it gives you quite a bit of information here on how your space is being used and for what. 
So now what we're going to do is I have this photon template over here and I'm going to go ahead and clone this particular virtual machine and create a new one. And I'm going to call it failures to tolerate equals one and RAID 5. And click next. We're going to make sure that we're on the virtual sand data store there, the region A01. And as you see, the compatibility check succeeded. And then for the VM storage policy, we're going to go ahead and select that failure to tolerate 1 RAID 5 that we created. And as you see again, the region A01 vSAN data store is compatible and it meets the requirements. And click next. And we're going to click next again and then finish. And then we're going to wait for this virtual machine to be deployed. I'm going to fast forward. Okay, so that is deployed now. Now if you look for that particular VM, you're going to see that it is in the data store and in the cluster. If you look at that particular VM that we just deployed, and the storage policy is failed to 1, RAID 5, and it is compliant. If you ever make a change, you can also click that check compliance there and it will recheck if you make any changes. So we go to the monitor tab and then policies and we're going to see for this particular VM again hard disk 1 is failure to tolerate RAID 1, or RAID 5 rather, and then if you look at the physical disk placement it's in a RAID 5 configuration as it should be. Going back up to the cluster, monitor, virtual SAN, capacity. Again, you'll see that we have the metrics on the different dedupe and compression, as well as the use capacity breakdown and how much is used for what. Again, as you see at the bottom here under use capacity of virtual disks, VM home objects, file system overhead, and it breaks it all down for you. So it gives you a lot of great information. And, you know, your use space and, and what exactly is it being used for and how much. So let's go back over here and we're going to bring in our witness uh, virtual host here that we have and we're going to do a stretch cluster configuration. So we go to that host, we go to the storage devices, and as you see we also have a 10 gig drive for that which is the default for a virtual witness as well as a 15 gig drive. Going back up to the cluster level, we're going to go to Manage, Settings, under Virtual SAN, and then we're going to go to Fault Domains and Stretch Cluster, because again we're adding and setting up a stretch cluster, and we are using this ESX07 for the witness, the virtual witness. So we're going to set up our domains, our fault domains, as you see here, when you're doing stretch cluster, it, you have a preferred fault domain and a secondary. Now you can change the name of it if you want, but that's the default. So we're going to keep ESX01 and 02 in the preferred, and then we're going to move 03 and 04 over into the fault domain. Select that particular virtual ESS host for the virtual witness. And then we're going to select both the drives for that virtual witness. Again, these are default sizes. And then we're going to click Finish. Now it's going to take a minute to set up the fault domains and to set up that virtual ESX host as the witness to complete the process. As you see here, doesn't take too long to get that done. We're almost done. And it's now complete. So as you see now, there's two fault domains, the preferred and the secondary. So we go to the cluster level, go to manage, go to settings. Again, back down to fault domains where we're already at. And as you see, the stretch cluster is enabled. Preferred fault domain is preferred. The witness host is that ESX07. So now let's go to the monitor tab and we're going to go to health. Now as you're going to see here in the health tab there's a lot of checks that it does that monitors a lot of different things. As you see right now because of 
some movement around. We have data is failed right now. We have some warnings for the network, hardware compatibility, performance service, but then we also have some that are green as well. So there's a lot of checks that go on. And then as you see here, we can go ahead and click retest if you think that we need to do retest. If we take a closer look at the failed data, we're going to see that the virtual SAN object health is what's failed. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting as to why this is. So we go over to the, the VM that we created under the monitor tab and policies. We're going to see that both the VM home and the hard disk one are non-compliant right now. So again, we're in a non-compliant status. So let's look at the compliance failures. As you see, we have expected value of 1, current value of 0. If we go to Manage, and then go to Policies, again we see VN Home and Hard Disk 1 are non-compliant. So we're going to edit the VM storage policies. Then we're going to go ahead and select the virtual SAN default storage policy and apply to all. And we're going to click OK for that. As you see here, we're still showing non-compliant. So let's go back up to the cluster level. And we're going to click on Resync Components. Now, what you're going to want to see here is that the resyncing components, there's the number two, as well as the bytes left to resync of 999 meg. So until that resync completes and it says resyncing components of zero and there's no bytes left, we have to wait until that is completely finished and that sync is done. So I'm going to fast forward through that. I'm going to click on that virtual machine again. Go to monitor, policies. So we're going to click the check compliance again and as you see the VM home is now showing compliant. However, the hard disk one is still showing non-compliant. So I rechecked the compliance on that and now they're both showing compliant. And as you see for the physical displacement they're set to a RAID 1. Again because we put that back on the default policy. Now going back to the monitor tab and looking at health again we're going to go ahead and retest. You're going to notice that now the data is at a warning and the stretch cluster is failed. So we're seeing that the witness is not found, that virtual witness. So we're going to retest again. Sometimes it takes a little bit for everything to settle down and for everything to show up correctly. So you have to be a little patient sometimes. And as you see now, the stretch cluster and data is all green. The only thing that's showing a warning is hardware compatibility and performance service, which is expected for this environment. So now we're going up to the cluster to monitor virtual SAN to health. Looking at the hardware compatibility, we see that some of the warnings we got is the controller driver. Also see that the SCSI controller on the virtual SAN hardware compatibility list is not correct. So we can ask the VMware button here to find out what the problem is. But I'm not connected to the internet on this environment, so we're not going to get that up. So I'm going to go ahead and get past this. But if you are connected to the internet, it would take you right to KV articles. So let's go back to the Manage tab, Settings, under Virtual Sand. Let's go to Health and Performance. Now you see that the health service status is enabled, which version it is. Health check interval is off right now. But then you see we have the hardware compatibility list database. Now you can see it's been a long time since it's been updated. Now you can update per file or you can get the latest version online by clicking that and it'll automatically update the database. Now again, we're not connected to the internet here in this environment, so it won't show the update unfortunately. You also see under health and performance, we have the performance service is turned off currently. So with that being turned off, we're just going to click edit and you're going to leave the checkbox to turn on the performance and then you can set it to whatever particular default store data store storage that you're using 
And again, it takes a minute for any statistics to show up and for it to finish. Sometimes you will have to refresh the screen. And as you see, once we did that, the stats object health is healthy. The object storage policy is the vSAN default storage policy and that the compliant status is compliant. So again, going to the monitor tab, going to performance, we can go down to the virtual SAN virtual machine consumption. Click refresh. And as you see, we can now, because we turned on that performance service, we can now start pulling some information regarding to that information based upon various hours, time, based on whatever you need. And that can be IOPS, throughput, latency, congestion, outstanding I.O. So as you can see, it gives you some good information regarding the virtual machines in that virtual SAN environment. Then looking at virtual SAN for the back end, same thing, we can click refresh. And again, it gives us the stats for IOPS, throughput, latency, congestion, and outstanding I.O. as well. Now obviously these graphs, there's not much in there because we just turned on the service and we don't have much going on in their environment, so there's not much data. But in a production environment, you would see obviously data inside of these graphs, which would be useful. So now going back to the general tab. Again, going back showing that the disk format version is 3.0 and it's updated, and that zero out of eight disks are, up are needing updates. Going back to the disk management, we can see all the disk groups and all the disks in them. Looking at the fault domains and stretch cluster, we see that it's enabled, the preferred. We see the two fault domains with ESX hosts in them. Then we go to the health and performance, and again, it shows us the health service is enabled. The database is outdated. We can go over to the monitor tab, look at our physical disks on each host. Go to the virtual disks. Again, we'll see the status of that, the VM home and the hard disk. Resyncing components, we'll see that there's none going on right now, which is good. Go to the health. Again, we looked at that before. The only thing it shows a warning is hardware compatibility, which is expected. Go to the capacity. Again, it gives us capacity overview, DDoP and compression overview, and then the use capacity breakdown. And then we also have these proactive tests, something that we hadn't looked at yet. So this one here, I'm going to run the VM creation test. And what this does is this is a nice test to run a couple of these when you first configure your vSAN environment and get your data store up and running. This right here will go through and create a very small and quick virtual machine, put it on the data store, and then delete it off of there just to make sure that the data store is functioning properly. And you can put virtual machines onto that data store. So as you see, it completed successfully and it passed. Then we have the multicast performance test. And as you see, the multicast performance test failed. That is, we are in a nested environment, so that always fails in that type of environment. So let's go over the virtual SAN data store. Again, region A01. Again, we can look at our virtual SAN capacity. Used, what's free, deduplication, compression ratios, and savings can go back to the monitor tab for the data store. We can look at all issues and triggered alarms. We can look at performance information. Get you some graphs here. So again, under the manage and settings for the virtual SAN data store, as you see here, you have capacity information as well as the storage policy and the device backing information as well. So as you see, there's a lot of information that we give you as far as your capacity, performance, uh, but yet in the same token, Virtual SAN, as I said before, is very simple and easy to administer as well as install and configure as you saw. It's simply a matter of enabling Virtual SAN, you know, getting the disks, getting them into the disk groups for each particular ESX host, and it creates the virtual SAN data store for you. And then from there, you create your policies as needed. And then you could deploy 
virtual machines, you select the particular policy that's appropriate for that machine and it automatically places it correctly. So virtual SAN is very simple to use, but yet it is a workhorse and it performs as a workhorse. It is an enterprise class virtual storage solution. So with that, that completes the demo portion of this presentation. Well, that completes my demo of installing and configuring Virtual SAN 6.2. I hope you got some value out of uh, seeing this demonstration on how to install and configure Virtual SAN. How, and I wanted to stress how easy it is to install and configure Virtual SAN. Again, Virtual SAN is built into the vSphere hypervisor. There's no separate appliance that you have to install or anything like that. So it's very easy to a administrator that's already familiar with using the vSphere web client to be able to manage storage using virtual SAN. Even if they're not a storage administrator or don't have a storage administration background, you can see how easy it was to be able to install, configure, and manage virtual SAN. Now, another fact to let you know is the environment in which I demoed the install and configuration from was actually our VMworld hands-on labs. Now, if you've ever been to our VMworld conferences, you know that we have our hands-on labs there. And that hands-on labs environment always has the latest and greatest editions of our software for engineers such as myself to go and play with and use our products and get familiar with it from a technical aspect. So, again, I use the labs for this particular demonstration, and it was specifically the hands-on labs, which was the virtual SAN A to Z lab. And if you'd like to go out and do this lab for yourself or do other labs with our other solutions, you can go to labs.hol.vmware.com, sign up with an account. It takes literally two minutes to set up an account. Then you can go in and start using our labs and get a guided instruction on how to go through and use our different solutions and do different use cases with each one of them. So I highly recommend that you go out to labs.hol.vmware.com. So that completes this particular demonstration. Again, I hope it was of value to you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.